Dr. Hermann Olberth, who pioneered a rocket design for the German Reich and later for the American manned space launches, once cryptically stated, and I quote, We cannot take credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields alone. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, and again I quote, the people of other worlds. Werner von Braun was a famous German aerospace engineer and spacecraft architect credited with inventing the V-2 rocket for Nazi Germany and the Saturn V for the United States. He echoed similar knowledge of a Nordic looking extraterrestrial influence when he stated in 1959, and I quote, we find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months time it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter. Just who were the people of other worlds? that both of these esteemed German scientists spoke of so nonchalantly. The medium Maria Orsic was leader of the German Vril Society. In pre-World War II Germany, the Sisters of Vril conducted research into psychic phenomenon, advanced propulsion technology, and this included saucer-shaped aircraft or UFOs as they're still called by the media 70 years later. Their Vril Society, whose members included some who would later become notable members of the Nazi party, believed that many ancient civilizations owed their origins to refugees from Atlantis. They advanced the idea of a subterranean civilization ruled by an ancient parent race who had mastered a technology called Vril and this breakaway civilization was said to have survived antediluvian cataclysms which ended the ice age and they continued to thrive below the surface of the earth. While it is widely accepted that the Nazis were defeated with Germany's formal surrender in 1945, this is only partly true. The Nazi elite were able to covertly develop craft that were far in advance of anything possessed by the Allies and establish a secret subterranean base in Antarctica, uh, New Schwabenland. New Swabia, or New Schwabenland in German, is an area of Antarctica called Queen Maudland. It was explored by numerous German Antarctic expeditions and one in the late 1930s reportedly discovered ice-free areas with warm freshwater lakes and signs of growing vegetation right there in the middle of the barren ice. The Nazi party proceeded to covertly build a massive secret uh, subterranean base in the large hollow caverns which have naturally formed deep under the Antarctic ice. Uh, they continually shipped men, uh, resources, material to the South Pole throughout the war years and in 1943 uh, the German Navy Grand Admiral Karl Donitz stated that the German submarine fleet is proud of having built for the Fuhrer in another part of the world, a Shangri-La, an impregnable fortress. The media is largely controlled by the Rothschild banking dynasty, as everyone knows, and for the most part, they promoted a false narrative concerning the events of World War II. Hitler's body was never recovered and that's why after the Allies claimed unconditional victory, U.S. Secretary of Defense James Forrestal sent a military force known as Operation High Jump to invade Antarctica. 
and this included Admiral Nimit, Admiral Krusen, and Admiral Byrd. Over 4,500 military troops from the United States, Britain, and Australia, consisting of three naval battle armadas, departed from three separate locations in 1946 following the war. Admiral Byrd's command ship led the invasion. It, it consisted of the icebreaker Northwind, the catapult ship Pine Island, the destroyer Bronson, the aircraft carrier Philippine Sea, the U.S. submarine Senate, two support vessels Yankee and Merrick, two tankers Canisted and the Capican, the destroyer Henderson, and a float plane ship, Karatek. So Byrd was given unlimited funding and a full eight months to complete this operation. According to numerous sources, including Admiral Byrd himself, that things did not go as planned and it was a very one-sided affair with the Antarctic Nazis victorious. Upon returning from a rather swift and I guess you could say a humiliating defeat by forces which were supposedly surrendered weeks after Hitler's supposed suicide. We have published interviews where Admiral Byrd stated clearly that it was now, and I quote, necessary for the United States to take defensive actions against enemy air fighters which come from the polar regions. So the United States military and intelligence were not in Antarctica for research or scientific experiments, but they were apparently trying to locate and destroy this immense underground facility that was constructed by the Germans before, during the war, and continued after the war. And it was likely used to further the research conducted by the Nazis and certain secret societies which were developing uh, advanced propulsion technology, um, advanced aircraft. And these were the same ones used to decimate the Allies in Antarctica. Saucer-shaped disks, far in advance of anything possessed by the US. Top secret maps obtained by the KGB, allegedly, and belonging to the Third Reich have been recently leaked on the internet, which, again, allegedly depict passages under the Antarctic ice which were used by these German U-boats to access these mysterious underground polar caverns. The possibility that the Earth contains massive underground caves, caverns, that it's hollow or at least partially hollow, that these regions are accessible through passages at the poles, and that ancient secret breakaway civilizations flourish within them, this has renewed people's interest in a subject that's still largely considered, by the media at least, to be very taboo. And polar expeditions and battles like Operation High Jump still remain classified. And it's just shrouded in secrecy for decades now. But scientific revelations are coming out, they validate the rumors, and these covert events and their implications are finally being exposed and um, the earth might actually have entire civilizations living underground that we the public now are just being made aware of.